Greetings. Pastor and I here at Shepherd of the Hills Lutheran Church. Today is Ash Wednesday. We will not have a parking lot or in-person Wednesday evening worship today or any time during Lent because of the ongoing pandemic. However, I will have a brief Facebook message each week from an illustrated Lenten series called Reflections on the Heart, starting with today, Ash Wednesday, and will continue each Wednesday during Lent. We'll start next week with storing up treasures and sharing our hearts, knowing the good, consider the lilies, becoming something new, shifting our gaze, and ending with week seven, sharing our treasures. I will also be either emailing or mailing out the full weekly Reflections on the Heart Lenten devotion and activities to everybody on our mailing list and to whom whoever else may wanna be on that list. If you do wanna be included, please call the office 402-571-7797 or you can send me, Pastor Di, a text with your name and address or email address. And that number is 402-320-0342. The peace and reconciliation of our merciful Creator be always with you. In many regions of the world, people celebrate carnival in the days before Lent with much noise and merrymaking and One of the most recognized is the Mardi Gras in New Orleans. People will wear masks and and hold parades. And Fat Tuesday, or known in the church as Shrove Tuesday, pancake feeds are common. This year was different because of the pandemic. Shrove Tuesday is a celebration that's observed the day before Ash Wednesday. The term Shrove Tuesday derives from an act of Anglo-Saxon Christians who were confessing their sins before Lent and thus being shriven of them. Well, today is Ash Wednesday and it marks the first day of the Christian observance of Lent. It's a 40-day period of abstinence and reflection that precedes Easter. As we are aware, the celebrations surrounding Shrove Tuesday and our traditional Ash Wednesday and Lenten Wednesday evening services has been altered and has been put on hold because of the outbreak of the pandemic starting in March of last year. However, Lent's not going to be canceled. It still begins today, Wednesday, February 17th, regardless if our traditional gathering is not held because of safety precautions, we still gather together and come before the Lord. So although we're not gathering physically in our worship space, it's still time that we should strive to take off our masks, turn our face and our hearts to God. This holy time of Lent is a time for reflection. It's a time to stop and listen to God, to confess our sinful nature, to draw us closer to God, to reflect on God's word. So what do we reflect on? Reflect on listening, really listening to God. That might require a time set aside to be still and be in God's word. Reflect on Who am I and what am I living for? Reflect on, am I really living for God and God's community and building God's kingdom? Traditionally on Ash Wednesday, we receive the sign of a cross on our foreheads with ashes and we hear these words, you are dust and to dust you shall return. Well, I like the words a colleague of mine reflected on Facebook the other day, and she said, God made you from dust, and you are a marvelous creation. First, what is it about the ashes? Biblically, ashes were sometimes used in purification rites, but more commonly, a rite of penitence. So there are many scenes in the Bible telling of the tearing of garments and the heaping of ashes on oneself as a sign of true repentance. 
Well, the ritual of the application of ashes on Ash Wednesday then symbolizes this penitential recognition that we are but human and we cannot live without God. This ritual has been used in the church since the 10th century. So receiving the ashes is a reminder to repent for your sins, to identify yourselves as a Christian. But remember, it's not the actual ritual. It's not the actual receiving of the ashes in the form of a cross on your forehead that's going to signify, identify, cause you to be a Christian and give you forgiveness. No, it has nothing to do with it. It is the word of God working in your heart. So this is not an obligation. Life as you know it as a Christian is not going to fall apart if you can't go get ashes on your forehead. It's not a magic potion. The history and the significance of Ash Wednesday reminds us that it's the day that our Lenten journey begins. It's a time to cleanse our minds and souls of sins at the feet of God. It's a time to go on this journey with Jesus Christ in our hearts. Please join me in the responsive reading of Psalm 51. Surely you desire truth in the inner parts. You teach me wisdom in the inmost place. Cleanse me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out my iniquity. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. Grant that our confession and imposition of ashes may be to us a sign of our own mortality and penitence, that we may remember that it is only by your gracious gift that we are given everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Let us now together confess our sins before God and one another. Almighty God, maker of all things, judge of all people, we acknowledge and confess our sins, which we from time to time have committed in thought, word, and deed against thy majesty. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. Most merciful God, for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ, forgive us all our sins and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please you in newness of life to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Although we will not be gathering to get ashes on our foreheads because of the health risks, I encourage you to mark yourself with the sign of the cross on your foreheads with water. Remembering your baptism, remembering that you are named, claimed, beloved, and a forgiven child of God. You see, this is all about hope. This time is all about connecting our hearts to God. This time is about living passionately, gracefully, truthfully, about getting back in touch with the intensity of our baptismal vows. We gather and we once again follow Jesus, picking up the cross and preaching the gospel. Blessed be to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be the kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. 
cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Creator, the Sustainer, and the Comforter, we pray. Amen. Only God can make us whole again from our brokenness and give us the insight to discover how often we are alienated from the promise of the scriptures, from others, and even from ourselves. Only God can give us the strength to change our ways and to become all new. May the living and loving God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, and may Christ be your strength. Thanks be to God. We will see you Sunday in our parking lot worship here at 60th and Sorensen's at 10 a.m. Also on Facebook, as well as Wednesday Facebook messages. Thank you.